I'm going to bring this closer here. And I might have to adjust that a little bit as well. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is the chicken stock here. All right, so I have my chicken carcasses here next to me. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, we are going to uh, blanch our bones. Um, that's going to be the first step. Um, the reason why we do this is um, a lot of the impurities that are in the chicken are going to rise to the top. And then what we're going to do after that blanch is we're going to dump out all of that water. We're going to put in clean water, rinse off our chicken carcasses, and then we're going to bring it back to a boil. We'll add our mirepoix, we'll add all of our aromatics in there, and then that will start the beginning of our chicken stock, okay? So the first step here, I'm going to add in my carcasses. We're working with three of them here. All right, and I'm going to bring this over to um, my sink. I know you guys won't be able to see it. I'm going to bring this over to my sink. Um, and I want to fill it, this is for this first one, I just want to fill it just until um, maybe a couple inches above the carcasses here, um, just for that first one, and then um, that will be our first blanch. All right, so I'm going to take this over to my sink. And we want to fill it with cold water. It shouldn't be hot, it shouldn't even be warm. We should be starting it with cold water. So you see, I have that filled up again, uh, filled it with cold water. All right, now we're going to turn it up. Um, to start, we're going to turn it all the way on high heat. This is going to help rise that temperature much faster. Once it comes to a boil, uh, we'll then turn it down to about um, a low to medium heat um, and just let it kind of blanch for about 10, 15 minutes. Um, really what we're looking for is more eyesight than time. Um, what we're going to be able to see on the top of here is a lot of um, white foam and that all of that is going to be the impurities. So once we begin to see that come to the top, we know our first blanch is done. Okay, so if you're going based on time, it's been 15 minutes, but you're really not seeing much of a difference. Just let it go a little bit longer until you see those impurities come out. Okay. So while my chicken stock over here is working, I'm going to be practicing some knife cuts, um, but I'm also going to be utilizing these as well, and they're going to go into our stock. Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to start here with our onion. All right. Now there's two sides to an onion. Um, you have this uh, fuzzier side. This is actually the root side. So whenever um, the onions are growing in the ground, that root side is what is attached, okay? And this is that side that we want to keep intact anytime we um, are doing any type of like small dice, large dice. Um, it's gonna help hold our onion together. The other end here, so here we have that root end. The other end here we will cut off. All right, and we're just gonna cut it down. I always have a garbage bowl next to me um, so I can keep my mess contain, uh, contained here. All right, now that I have a nice flat surface, I'm gonna cut this in half. All right, and I'm gonna show you two different cuts utilizing the onion. So the first one I'm gonna show you is going to be a julienne of an onion. And now because we're practicing, um, and we're just making a chicken stock, you, there really is no right or wrong. You can't mess this up, all right? So 
if you're uh, practicing, um, it's just for practice. The stock won't matter um, because we discard all of our mirepoix um, after our stock is done, okay? And our mirepoix here um, is onions, carrots, and celery, okay? So if you have random cuts, that's perfectly fine. Utilize it in a stock. Um, there will be no waste whatsoever, all right? So what I always do, I'm actually going to go grab a plate. I like to keep all of my cuts together. So I'm going to grab a plate here and set it in front of me. All right. So we're going to do this julienne cut here. All right. Now I always go to the shape of the onion. So the onion is this half moon shape. So when I first start, I actually have my knife at an angle. Almost imagine that you're going to point your knife towards that center of the onion, okay? And that's where we want to go. If I were to just cut it down right here, I'm going to end up, and you can see visually, I'm going to end up with this weird random cut here. Um, and for a julienne cut, we really don't want that there. All right, so we're going to go to the shape of the onion. Now when we're using our knife, you always want to make sure to get consistent cuts is to keep that knife on the board and practice rocking it back and forth, okay? If we're picking up our knife each time, our consistency is going to be thrown off completely, okay? So holding it at an angle, making sure our point is on the cutting board, we're going to then start to make some thin slices. And you can see just rocking that knife, back and forth. Okay, now what I like to do when I get to this halfway point, you can absolutely continue to just work around the onion this way, but what I find that's easier for me is to flip it and then just continue to work on it. Again, just rocking that knife back and forth, getting nice consistent cuts. All right, and there we have our julienned onions. So if you can see them up close there, they are all of uniform size. All right, of uniform thickness. All right, and that's exactly what we want. So um, you could do this with a red onion, you could do this with a shallot. Um, with a leek, I mean, really, julienne and onion, um, almost all identical as far as how you're doing it, okay? Um, you know, you can utilize your julienne onions, you can make French onion soup, use them for a salad, um, whatever it is that you would like to do. So I'm going to go ahead and set these aside here. All right. So we still have this second half of the onion. Now for that julienne onion, we did cut that root end off. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do a dice here and we are actually going to leave that root end intact. We're just gonna peel our onion, all right. Making sure you have all of that papery skin off. And now I like to work as close as I can to my table. All right, um, I find this a lot easier if I have um, my cutting board up here and I'm trying to work with it. My hand is going to be hitting the table and I'm not going to be able to get my knife nice and even. Okay, so I pull my cutting board as close to the table as I can. And then I could work with my hand off of the table and then I can gauge my distance safely without my hand hitting that table. Okay. So when I'm doing a small dice, medium dice, or large dice, um, the spacing is really is what is going to tell the difference from the cut of your onion, all right? So if you wanted a large dice, um, you're going to have a little bit more spacing. If you want a small dice, you're going to have less spacing in between, okay? Now when I cut it through to the onion, I want to imagine where that root end ends, and it ends about right there on that onion, okay? And if you can't really tell, you can look on the inside of the onion and it's about right there, right? So 
when I do my cuts, I'm gonna cut this direction and I'm gonna stop where, right where about that root end would be. All right, slicing it through. And I'm gonna do a small dice here. So I'm just gonna move it slightly up, just a little, cut through. And I'm keeping my knife nice and parallel to that cutting board. So if you're cutting it and you can see, oh, my knife is it nice and parallel, right? Keep it parallel to that cutting board. If you do it like this, you can see I'm gonna have some offset cuts here, all right? And then you can see that spacing between that onion, nice and even, all right? Now again, I'm gonna work to the shape of the onion. So I'm gonna have my knife pointed towards that root end and I'm just gonna make small cuts to the shape of the onion here. Going around that onion. Okay, we have a few stragglers, that's okay. We can utilize those, they'll go right into our stock. All right, so now that I have it cut all the way, nice spacing all the way through. Now I'm going to take my knife. And saw through it. All right, you can see they're nice, consistent cuts. And that root end, if you wanted to, you could still save it, utilize it, a little bit more of it. The cuts will not be the same, of course. All right. And there's our small dice of our onion. Again, set that aside. And this is what I want you guys to do. When you guys are practicing your knife cuts, I want to see them all on a plate like this so when you have all of your cuts it looks nice and neat and together okay all right all right next what i'm going to do here is a carrot all right now there's a couple different cuts that you could do on a carrot all right, I had already peeled my carrot, so it was nice and ready. You always wanna make sure you peel your carrots no matter what it is that you're doing with it. Um, carrots do grow in the ground, so that peel has a lot of dirt on it. All right, and uh, depending on the length of your carrot, I'm probably going to wanna to cut it in half. This one is pretty long, so I do find it easier for me to work with the smaller piece of the carrot um, than trying to go um, all the way down the length of a long carrot, all right? So the first one here that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to julienne on a carrot, all right? So I'm just gonna cut off a small end here. Um, this is just um, that rounded end, so I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to make a small cut here as thin as you could possibly go. You want it about an eighth of an inch, all right? So you can see how thin that is. Again, it's all a matter of keeping your knife nice and thin, okay? Okay, so continuing on with our Julian cut here, all right? So you want to go for about an eighth of an inch thickness, keeping it nice and even. So if you notice your knife is at an angle, you'll probably end up having one thicker end, one thinner end. Keep it nice and thin. Point your knife down and just drop it all the way through. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to I'm gonna discard that one. So I have a nice squared surface. Again, aiming for about an eighth of an inch here. And then make your cuts all the way through. All right. 
So you should have some nice consistent, you should end up seeing um, a square at the end there. If yours looks rectangular, um, it doesn't look consistent. Um, just practice, try again. Okay. And then of course, once you get more comfortable, just start rocking that knife back and forth. But for this one, I really want you guys to focus on the consistency um, and aiming for those same size, then more for rocking your knife on these ones. All right. So there's all of our Julianne here. All right. And I can get one more. I'll get more out of this one. So now I'm going to show you how to turn your Julianne into a small dice. So get your Julian cuts here. You're just going to gather them up all together. And rocking your knife back and forth, holding them together with your fingers tucked. And there you have some nice small dices of some carrots. All right. All right, next cut we're gonna do here on the carrots um, is our rondelle. All right, so I'm actually going to cut this piece off here just so I can get my angle. I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so you could see I have an angle on that carrot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point um, my knife right where that angle meets and holding it at an angle as well, you'll end up with these nice, large triangle-like pieces. Uh, pieces like this are really good for roasting. So if you're roasting up um, some potatoes, carrots, maybe some parsnips, and you're roasting them all together, um, it's a really good um, way to utilize this. All right. Nice and easy, nothing too complicated about that one, but you have some nice um, consistent sizes. If you had a big batch of it, like I said, uh, looks really nice and pretty um, for some roasted veggies. Okay. And if you're just practicing, you have those end pieces. This is just the end that I trimmed off um, of that carrot. Um, what you could do with these is just practice holding your knife at an angle. Um, I really like doing biased cuts. Um, so anytime that I'm sauteing veggies, I like to use a bias. And then it's basically just holding your knife at an angle so you get these nice, long, beautiful slices like this. All right. Something like this would be um, good used for a stir fry or you can do it as a side veggie. Um, and of course you can work with, I'll show you using this carrot here. Again, doing that bias cut. So if I'm holding my carrot and it's straight like this, what I'm doing is taking my knife and turning it. The more of an angle that you have of your knife, the deeper of a bias you'll get. So the less of an angle, the less of a bias, okay? So there's your nice bias cut. And just to show you that difference, if I were to have just cut that carrot just straight down, you can see that size difference. Um, where that's just um, that circle just cut straight down and then that's out of the bias. So it looks um, visually like more, even though it's same size and consistency. All right. And then I'm just gonna move the camera here for a second because I want to show you guys what's happening in my stock here. All right, so if you guys can see that, you see how cloudy it's getting now? Um, I don't know if it appears to be blurry on the screen, but that's just the cloudiness of that chicken stock. All right, so that's those impurities. They are starting to come to that top. 
Um, we started with that cold water, so it's just warming up. Um, the warmer it'll get, more of those impurities will rise, but you can already see a difference um, how clear it was to how cloudy it is now. And this is why we discard this first batch. Um, if we were to, and you, and you can, you can make your stock using this first batch of water, but you're gonna have a really cloudy stock. Um, and we really don't want that. If we're utilizing, utilizing this chicken stock um, in a soup or we're making a sauce out of that, we really don't want that cloudiness. We want a nice clear stock, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that. It's still got a little ways to go. All right. I'm sorry, I don't know why it appears to be a little bit blurry now. Does it appear clear for you guys? Just give me a thumbs up if you can see clearly or if it looks blurry. Okay. I wonder if it just needs to refocus on something. There we go. There. I just need it to refocus for a second. Okay. All right. So um, we already have our onions. We have our carrots. Now to finish off our mirepoix, we need some celery here. Okay. So again, you can still do your bias cuts. You can practice here on that celery. You're going to end up with um, so about half moon shapes though, doing it on a celery. Um, just because that's the shape of the celery, uh, but you can still do it in that format. Okay. Now when we're making a stuff, we're going to utilize all parts. So you could just do a rough chop just like so. And normally if I was just doing just a stock and I wasn't just practicing some knife cuts, that's what I would do. I would just cut it up in some large dices just like that. All right, but all these cuts here that I have on my plates, all of these are gonna get utilized um, in our stock. All right. So to show you how to do some dices, because again, this is um, that half moon shape. So when you're doing dices, I like to rotate my celery so it's on one side here. Um, if I were to just work in that center, I'm gonna end up with some weird um, off centered slices. So I'm gonna hold it here on its side, cut down, and then you could kind of roll it just a little bit, cut down. That one ends up being a little bit off there. All right. So again, you ended up with these, um, uh, this would be more of like a batonet size here. And just to work on your dices, practice rocking that knife back and forth. All right. And there we have our dices. All right, and then you could see that size difference of those right next to each other. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just chop up this last celery here. Oh, I actually have a small piece here too. Uh, let me think, if you were to do, we could do like a larger dice here on this one. Or this would be probably do like a medium dice. Just cutting it in half. When you guys are practicing your knife cuts, what I really want you to focus on um, is just consistency. So you can see the size difference between those ones. Um, I really want you guys to focus on just the consistency, getting that as accurate as you're possible. The speed will come with time. So don't back, focus on um, trying to be as fast as you possibly can. That's not really our goal. Um, consistency, all right? The more consistent your cuts are, the more even of a cook of whatever product it is that you're making, the more even of a cook it will end up being, okay? So if you have um, a small dice like this and a large dice like this, 
this small one here is going to cook a whole lot faster than this larger piece. And to say we are serving this in a soup, it's visually not going to look as appealing either. All right, so that consistency, really, really important. All right, I'm just gonna finish cutting up the celery here. We're really going to need it for our stock. All right, and then if you look here, you know, I have a couple different cuts here of celery, of onions, of carrots, and all of this, um, I just used um, one onion here. I used uh, about one and a half carrots here. Um, there was three celery ribs here. So I mean, we did get quite a few different cuts just utilizing just a couple different vegetables, okay? So when you guys practice your cuts, that's what I want to see. I want to see all of your cuts on a plate. All right. I'm just going to put it all together here because it's all going to go in my stock when the time has come. All right. And I'm going to take a second here. And um, I got to switch out my butane because my burner has turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this before you real quick. All right, so you could see now that I have my butane changed out, you can see a lot of those impurities starting to come up to the top. Um, so it's just now starting to come to a boil. Um, I'm just gonna let it go a little bit longer. Um, and then you're gonna see a lot more of that coming up. Again, this is why we don't keep that first batch. Um, of liquid. If we were to make our stock out of this, it's going to be really, really cloudy. Again, you can just see um, all those impurities popping up. Uh, we don't want that, okay? So go ahead. I'm going to let this continue to work here. It's just about ready um, for it to be rinsed, all right? The one last cut I want to show you guys is how to chiffonade some basil, all right? And you can chiffonade any type of flat leaf um, herb, or you could even do it to spinach, you could chiffonade um, uh, kale, um, anything that's of that leafy variety here. And we're just going to pick off these leaves. All right, and what I like to do is I like to layer my leaves just like so. And up those little ones. And then we're just going to roll it. I like to do this because it keeps it nice and neat and together. And again, by rocking your knife back and forth, we're going to make some nice thin strips here. Um, now, the more spacing apart um, that you do this will depend on that size. So if you keep it closer together, um, you're gonna end up some, with some really fine chiffonade pieces. You can start to see those right there. If we were to speed this, this out a little bit further, we're going to end up with some thicker slices of our chiffonade there. And it's just all about the spacing of your knife. All right, so you guys can see that difference of um, this was that of the knife close together. This was it with a little bit more spacing. Both are right, both are chiffonade. It just depends on what you're using it for. Um, so this finer um, chiffonade here, I would use this as a garnish um, uh, for anything on top of a pasta or maybe for a bruschetta. These thicker slices I would use uh, to throw into a marinara or maybe to top a pizza with. Uh, maybe if you're making a margarita pizza. All right. All right. So no, so those are your chiffonade there. So again, turning the camera back here to our stock, you can see how much um, of those impurities have risen to the top. Okay, so once it came to that boil, 
it happened rather quickly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a strainer, I'm gonna dump my chicken carcasses into the strainer, I'm going to rinse off the carcasses themselves and dump out all of this um, water that's in here. Once I rinse off my carcasses, I'm gonna put the carcasses back into my pot. I'm going to add clean water into it, and then I'm going to add that mirepoix, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and pause this for a second. Okay, so I have my carcasses rinsed, turning back on my heat. I had clean water. Um, it's about six inches above where the carcasses meet, so we want plenty of water in there, all right? Um, we're going to add in all of our mirepoix, so all of those veggies that you practiced cutting up, we're gonna go right into our stock. Okay, and then we're going to add our aromatics. So, so for this recipe, we have bay leaf, we have dry thyme, we have cloves, and we have peppercorns. All right, and we're just going to add those right in there as well. We're just gonna give this just a little stir. You don't really need to worry about stirring it while the stock um, is simmering, uh, but just in that beginning, just to kind of get it incorporated, just give it a little stir. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we'll turn down our heat and we just want a very, very low simmer. I mean, you should see just a couple little bubbles here and there. Um, once you uh, reach that, that uh, rapid boil, turn it down, just get those nice slow bubbles there developing. And then you're just gonna let it go low and slow for four to six hours. Okay, after that four to six hours, your stock is done. Um, you can then uh, strain out all of the mirepoix and those carcasses, and you want to reserve this stock, okay, or this water at this time. Um, don't discard that water, all right? If you discard it, well, that defeated the whole purposes of us making stock, right? So make sure you have a container that you can strain out the stock in, all right? Um, if you have a strainer at home or a fine mesh strainer, a uh, colander, anything would work um, to get out all of this. I mean, if you don't have anything like that, even a slotted spoon, um, just to get out all of that mirepoix that's in there. All right, so once you get that second water in there, add your mirepoix, add your aromatics. We're bringing it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, turn down your heat four to six hours, and then you're going to have a really, really lovely stock. All right. Do um, you guys have any questions? All right. I take your silence as everything's okay. 